What is up everyone, this is Tom, welcome back to another video. Now I put out a poll on my YouTube community section a couple of days ago to try and get a grasp for what editing systems you guys use, the people that watch and engage with these videos, this sort of videography community that we're starting to build here on this channel. And I was really curious as to what you guys are editing with. Now I was super interested to see that Premiere Pro came out on top of that survey. There was about sort of 50% of the votes were using Premiere Pro. Now I was in this situation, I've edited on Premiere Pro for a long, long time. However, most recently for the past couple of years, I've been using Final Cut Pro. Now, if you are on a Mac, I personally believe that Final Cut Pro is a better editing solution than Adobe Premiere Pro. And in this video, I wanna break down five reasons why I think that, why I think that Final Cut Pro is such a good editing software for the Mac system. We're gonna go straight Straight in, we're gonna power through the list and the first and foremost is the most important one for me and any professional video uh, editor, video maker, and that is that it is faster. Now, Adobe has actually stepped up their game quite dramatically since in the last, the, sort of the last few months on the Mac system particularly. Now, the uh, Adobe Premiere Pro performance used to be really lagging behind and really slow. They have definitely improved that with the last few versions of Premiere Pro. However, I do wanna briefly talk about fluidity and speed within Final Cut Pro because I basically just have never had any issues. Like you can drop pretty much most footage into Final Cut and things will play back uh, at really decent uh, frame rates, thing like no drop frames unless you're doing very intensive effects work. So here I have just a standard 1080 clip, P clip within my timeline. I have a very small grade of just a, uh, a lot on this footage. And you can see that everything is just playing back super, super smooth, full resolution with no issues. Even if we are to pull up something a little bit more intensive, like some footage that I shot from my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. This is, I think a 1080p clip, but filmed in 50 frames a second. Let's slow this down to 50% and have a look at this and things should still be uh, super, super smooth. Let's have a look. There we go, things are looking really great um, with that footage there. And again, just no performance issues. Premiere Pro does have its moments where uh, performance can be great, but overall, overwhelmingly for me, when I use Premiere, I just used to run into drop frames and really struggle with my timeline editing. All right, next up, it is cheap. Final Cut Pro is a one and done purchase. Now for me personally, I actually pay for Creative Cloud and Adobe Suite already. That basically means that it's not much of an advantage for me to pay one off for Final Cut because I do already pay the monthly subscription for Creative Cloud for all of my other creative work because I work freelance full time. However, if you are just starting out, 300 uh, US dollars or 300 pounds here in the UK for Final Cut Pro is an insanely good price for an editing software of this quality. You will have paid the difference of Premiere Pro within six months. So six months of full uh, Creative Cloud for your Premiere Pro package. And basically within a year, you're paying double the cost of Final Cut Pro. And within two years, it's quadruple. So things really do start to add up. Final Cut is a very, very good deal. Next up is speed ramping. Now, if you're wanting to speed ramp your footage, so let's go ahead and re-import that footage that I just looked at. So say we wanted to speed up this footage down here. You just press Command, uh, excuse me, uh, Shift B on a Mac. That will start creating a speed ramp for your footage. The speed ramping feature within Final Cut Pro is night and day compared to Premiere Pro. So if you're wanting to speed ramp here and then maybe we want to increase again, we can just drag these handles and fade out the time of the uh, speed ramp, the duration that the, the thing takes to get to your speed ramp. So we're going from slow and then things very quickly go into a nice, so a uh, smooth slow motion and that is all done just using these super super simple handles that it for me is just a massive advantage if you work with slow motion footage quite a lot then it's just an extremely useful feature to have uh, this sort of improved speed ramping within Final Cut Pro X. 
Another advantage for me is Final Cut Pro's autosave. Now, Premiere Pro does have autosave and it is a thing that just sort of will happen fairly regularly in the background. However, in my experience, the autosave feature on Final Cut Pro is far, far superior than the autosaving functionality on uh, Premiere Pro. Now, Premiere Pro does this thing where every so often it will pop up this sort of autosaving bar over your work, whereas on uh, Final Cut Pro, this is just constantly happening in the background. Everything is saving in the library that cr you created, and I have never had an issue in over two years of using the system now of uh, corrupted files or going back to a version of the autosave that was uh, previously there. Like I said, this is just sort of a preference thing. Like I said, I feel super, super secure with the autosaving functionality on Final Cut Pro X. And finally, what I want to talk about is the magnetic timeline, because in my opinion, this is one of the things which sets Final Cut Pro apart from Premiere Pro outside of the things sort of like just general performance, which are all a bit more debatable. This is a way that the, the system actually works. And in my opinion, it is something which is man massively beneficial to Final Cut. So let's take this uh, just sort of weird hybrid of clips that I have here. And say I want to delete this section, so I can literally just do that and I'm done within uh, you know, half a second, whereas on Premiere Pro that would be an extra clip to clip the inner section and then move it, shift it along to the left. Everything can be done using the magnetic timeline and then if you're wanting to build stuff above the timeline, you don't want everything to snap, you can very quickly, let's just uh, create this little section here, lift from storyline and then if we wanted to create this part above here, we can paste this in using Alt V and that will go above the storyline section here, we can extend that out and you can build a section of clips so you basically have the best of both worlds using this magnetic timeline. This really is something that you have to use and get used to but personally what I think once you do do that piece of work and you finally get used to the, the sort of inner workings of Final Cut Pro as a system, it will definitely save you hours once you get used to editing in a system like this. There we go guys, hopefully you have enjoyed this sort of explanation as to why I think Final Cut Pro is a better editor than Premiere Pro for Mac users. If you have any questions, if you maybe uh, you edit on Premiere Pro and you are thinking of switching, just drop one in the comments section down below. I'll be down there as always. I'll catch you guys next time.